All right, welcome everyone. On behalf of the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy, I'd like to thank you for joining today's webinar titled Exploring the Redesign Southeast Coal Ash .org, a one-stop site for coal ash data. My name is Kyle James and I'm the Development and Outreach Coordinator for the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy. For those of you who are not familiar with the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy, we are a nonprofit organization that promotes responsible energy choices that work to address the impacts of global climate change and ensure clean, safe, and healthy communities throughout the Southeast. We are a membership organization and we would like to acknowledge our members on this call and encourage those of you who are not members to please join us today. For ways in which you can become a member and get involved with SACE, please visit our website, www.cleanenergy.org. Now I'd like to take a moment to review the basic functions of the WebEx control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. To ensure sound quality, all attendee lines will be muted throughout this presentation. So go ahead and find the three buttons along the bottom on your control panel. If you are having trouble hearing or seeing the slides, click the blue chat button and type in your problem so that I can help you troubleshoot. We've also saved time at the end of this presentation to answer questions about today's topic. To ask a question, click the question mark button along the bottom of your screen. Make sure all panelists is showing up in the drop down menu, then type your question into the questions text box. We'll do our best to answer questions in the order that we receive them. I also wanted to highlight that a large segment of our presentation today will be on one of our presenters screen sharing to explore the southeastcoalesh.org website. So if for any reason you would like to return to your desktop or ask a question, Simply hover your mouse over the green rectangle at the top of your screen and a bar will come up and you can click all the way to the left to leave the screen share. So with that, I would like to turn it over to our, one of our first presenters today, Amelia Shenstone, Campaigns Director for the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy. She's going to give some brief context on coal ash as part of the conversation about clean energy. Amelia? Good morning, everyone. I'm Amelia Shenstone, and I'm the Campaigns Director for SACE. Before we dive into the southeastcoalash.org website, I'm going to give some brief context on coal ash as part of the conversation about clean energy. I oversee our work to reduce the southeast's dependence on coal as part of what SACE calls our high-risk energy choices program. High-risk energy choices are the ways we produce energy that we need to move away from as we transition to a cleaner energy economy. To us, this means nuclear energy, offshore drilling, building out and over-relying on natural gas, and particularly moving away from coal. Coal ash is one of the reasons why we would consider coal a high-risk energy choice. Coal is responsible for over 300 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions in the southeast making it a leading contributor to climate change. Burning coal also pollutes our air with smog and acid rain causing chemicals and mercury that finds its way into our water and our fish. It guzzles our water and pollutes it with chemicals and unnatural heat. And it leaves behind toxic coal ash waste that pollutes land and can seep into groundwater or water bodies, or worse, spill waste laden with heavy metals as we saw in Kingston at the Dan River, and most recently the Lee plant in North Carolina after Hurricane Matthews floodwaters. In the past few years, many coal plants have been closed, or it's been announced that they will be soon, mainly due to competition from cheap natural gas. It's also because our environmental rules are finally catching up with all the pollution, and it was cheaper to close the plant than to upgrade the pollution controls. This has resulted in over 100 million tons of avoided carbon dioxide emissions annually in the southeast. Whether a plant closes or not, its existing ash needs to be safely cleaned up. Many utilities are in the process of closing the watery ash impoundments that have been the traditional storage method, but the means they choose for closing these ponds may not actually provide sufficient protection, especially when the ash is left sitting in groundwater without a liner. Additionally, as utilities are facing new rules that will require them to upgrade the way they handle the ash they create going forward, which is an expensive proposition, we do believe there are still places where the best option is to stop burning coal. This website is meant to be a resource for cleaning up existing coal ash pits and to elevate the conversation about the realities of coal ash for utilities facing big decisions, as well as for their customers who will ultimately pay for them. And with that, I'll turn it over to Adam, who will walk us through the tools and resources available to you at southeastcoalash.org 
to help you push for coal ash near you to be properly cleaned up and for a transition away from burning coal as a source of electricity. Adam? Great. Thanks, Amelia, and thanks, Kyle. So now I'm going to begin screen sharing with everybody. And as a reminder, you should be able to escape the screen share um, by going up to the top, as you can see me doing now, and bringing down your controls. So thanks to everyone as well who's joining us this morning. My name is Adam Reeves, and I'm the High Risk Energy Coordinator with the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy. This morning, I want to spend about 15 minutes walking you through three key features of the revamped southeastcoalash.org and spend a little bit of time answering questions you may have. So I'm sharing my screen with you so you can follow along, and we're looking at the home page of the website now. But before I jump in, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on the site. We originally launched southeastcoalash.org in 2012 to serve as a tool for communities, advocates, decision makers, and reporters to identify where power plants and their coal ash storage pits are located in the southeast. Um, at that time, we wanted visitors to be able to quickly get a sense of what the potential risks of coal ash are to their health and the health of, the, of their environment. We recently did a lot of work revamping the website um, and making it mobile friendly so it's, it's easy to use all the features I'm going to show you on your mobile or tablet device as well. SACE manages this website in partnership with Appalachian Voices, the Southern Environmental Law Center, and North Carolina Conservation Network. So the first feature I want to highlight is the Southeast Power Plant map, which we're looking at right now. It's the main page of the website. It identifies power plants in the southeast with smokestack icons. Zooming in on a power plant will reveal its coal ash pits in yellow, and I'll demonstrate now. So we're looking at the Gigi Allen coal-fired power plant outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. And you can see coal ash storage pits, those that are historic and, and, and in use. These pits are often unlined and separated from our waterways by earthen dams that can leak, or as in the case of the Kingston disaster, catastrophically rupture. I'm going to zoom out now just to give you a, a view of the map again. Each smokestack icon you're seeing on the map is color-coded to provide the latest available EPA hazard rating for dams on site. Um, we're in the process now of updating many of these ratings based on utility data that's been provided. I'll get to that in a moment. But these hazard ratings indicate different levels of risk to human life and property. Red indicates high hazard. That's where a dam failure is likely to cause a loss of human life. Orange, or significant hazard, indicates dam failure is likely to cause significant economic loss, environmental damage, or damage to infrastructure. Low hazard, or brown, indicates that dam failure will likely not result in loss of human life and would only result in low economic or environmental losses. And gray simply means that there's no rating. So there's a lot more information at your fingertips on the site, which brings me to the next feature I want to highlight. So for that, I'll go back to Gigi Allen's plant. If you click on a smokestack icon, you can see the individual facility page for that power plant. It provides details about the power plant's owners, its age, its size, and its power production capacity as well as details about the river basin and region where the plant is located and which local groups you can contact for more information. Utilities are required by the Environmental Protection Agency's coal ash rule to create websites to host information about their coal ash pits in order to make that information available to the public. So at the top of each facility page, we provide direct links to these websites 
where available. By going to one of these websites, you can find details about the amount of ash and wastewater stored at the power plant. And in the future, you'll be able to find details about each pit's structural stability and whether or not groundwater contamination has been reported by utilities. So we're actually currently in the process of reviewing a lot of this data and posting it on the site. You can find the information we've collected so far by clicking the skull and crossbones icon at the bottom of each facility page. As you can see here, we have total known gallons, total known acres for the ash impoundments, total known ash tons, and total known gallons of wastewater. There's information about the sources of this data, as well as a breakdown of the impoundments themselves. While you're down here, make sure that you take a moment to click on the other icons. You can click on the on this satellite icon to get closer images of the site and its coal ash pits. You can click on the groundwater testing icon to see any kind of information that's already available about groundwater testing that's been conducted. You can click this icon to get a sense of what kind of contamination has been reported. And if you'd like to download the data that we are displaying, you can do so in a lot of different formats. The third feature I want to highlight for you this morning is our About Collash page. The page and its subpages context the issues that surround coal ash, and I'm hovering over the menu now. As you can see, we have pages that explore coal ash risk to public health and the environment, and succinct overviews of the Kingston and Dan River disasters, which raised alarms about coal ash throughout the U.S. and sparked efforts to regulate the toxic waste. Now, utilities are beginning to close coal ash pits throughout our region and throughout the country, but closure doesn't necessarily mean that cleanup will be thorough and that the risk of ground and surface water contamination will be eliminated. That's why the coal ash or the about coal ash tab also includes details about coal ash, wet and dry storage, and analysis of the pros and potential risks around coal ash reuse. You can check out our state pages. You can see on the top here, to find an overview of the history and regulation of coal ash in your state. You can also explore information about EPA's coal ash rules to learn more about the strengths and, and potential weaknesses of federal regulations. So I did, before closing this section, just want to give you a brief preview of what's coming next. EPA's coal ash rule requires utilities to provide lots of information through their public coal ash websites. And some of that data on these websites will be updated on an annual basis, and there are, there are many upcoming deadlines for more information to be revealed. And we'll be working to update our website and our facility pages to represent the latest available information. And the next big deadline to keep an eye on is November 16th. And after that date, we'll be able to post more new hazard ratings, which again are indicated by the smokestack icon coloration. And many utilities that are planning to close coal ash impoundments throughout the region will be listing their closure plans on these websites. And so we'll be linking to those as well. So if you're interested in what's happening in your area, your coverage area, or just the coal plant near where you live, you'll be able to see more about closure plans in your area. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening. And we can start taking a couple questions. I'm going to end my screen share at this time. Hey, as a quick reminder, I just wanted to um, remind everyone that if you wanted to ask a question, please click the question mark button along the bottom of your screen and make sure all panelists are showing up. And we will get to those as soon as we start to receive some here.
So while we're giving folks a second to let questions come in, I can highlight one more feature of the site for you. Um, and for that, I'll briefly take back control of the desktop. I just wanted to, this is a question that I get frequently from, from folks who are trying to look around beyond just a single site. They're interested in looking at their state or a particular utility. If you click on the Learn More tab, let me back up and not do that so fast. <laughs> if you click on the Learn More tab here, or you hover over it, come down to Reports and Resources, there's a great tool called Create Your Own Colash Reporting or Report Interactive Tool. This will allow you to generate your own report, which just compiles all the data for certain fields into one document that you can print. You can see you have, there's executive summaries and regional maps that you can opt out of. If you don't want to have all that, you can pick a particular plant or a set of plants. You can pick an entire state. Let me unclick this. And what this will do, I clicked Alabama, and it's going to give me a report on all of Alabama's power plants with a nice breakdown of the data on the site and maps. This is just a great way to easily print our data. Um, for whatever purpose you might need it for. So let's see if we have any questions that have come in yet. So Adam, uh, we have a question about the timeline for uh, ash information under the, uh, the EPA coal ash rule. Can you speak a little bit more to what we're expecting to come out and when and when folks can look for that on the website? Absolutely. So the next important deadline that's coming up, um, October 16th was, or October, I mean, excuse me, November 16th is an important deadline um, for the publication on, on these coal ash websites of information about hazard ratings um, for coal ash impoundment dams um, for closure and for closure plans throughout our region. Um, so these these are the hazard ratings are are due for plants that fall in or for coal ash impoundments that fall under the rule, and closure plans are due for impoundments where utilities are, are planning to close those impoundments. And this will be useful information, I think, for folks who have coal ash impoundments in their backyards or just folks who are monitoring progress or reporters who are covering the issue, just so folks can get a sense of, of the latest on what utilities are planning to do. The hazard ratings, I think, are important, again, for property owners and people who are covering the issue, advocates, and for other utilities and decision makers to keep an eye on, just to get a sense of what the potential risks are, um, and then you know what it, what could be done to mitigate those. Um, some of the other upcoming deadlines are, are pretty far out out in the future, uh, over a year away, but in a, in 2018, utilities will start needing to report groundwater monitoring. Um, so many will be, many of the ash impoundments are going to actually be monitored for certain constituents that that usually or that are dangerous or tend to indicate coal ash pollution, and these will give us a sense of what kind of pollutants are present in the groundwater and and perhaps indicate to utilities that there, that there may be a problem 
at their impoundments. Great, thanks. Um, we've gotten another question asking if SACE supports nuclear as an alternative to coal, and uh, I apologize if that was unclear. Uh, SACE does not support the expansion of nuclear. It's what we would consider a high-risk energy choice. Adam, we've got another question. Uh, I'll just read it out. I'm part of the steering committee and website social media outreach person with no ash at all in Wayne County, Georgia, and our concern is the Broadhurst landfill. The concern is with coal ash storage over wetlands and the Florida aquifer. Can you speak to that concern? Sure. So I think this is a common concern, and uh, it's important it's, you know, potentially dangerous to, to store coal ash uh, over, over aquifers, especially if they're not far away from, from the impoundment. And this is something that we've been paying attention to, um, especially in Georgia. We're actually asking um, the Environmental Protection Division and the Department of Natural Resources to reconsider their exemption of municipal solid waste landfills from the current rulemaking process. We think that it's important that every coal ash disposal facility has at least the same amount of protections as what's provided under the coal ash rule. And so that's something that we're working on right now and I'd be happy to follow up with you after the call to talk a little more details and um, perhaps share some of the the comments that we're planning to make. Great, and there was actually a follow-up to that about um, if we have a list of plants that would have impacts on wetlands or the Florida aquifer and also will municipal waste facilities storing coal ash that are not power plants also be listed on the map? We're not currently listing those facilities. There are many, many, many of them. Our website is focused solely right now on coal-fired power plants or former coal-fired power plant sites that store coal ash. And as far as plants that are particular or storage areas that are particularly of concern to wetlands, that would be something we can follow up on after the webinar. Yes, absolutely. So if you have a question that's burning, um, I will send out an email after this webinar, um, but I'm not seeing anything in the feed at the moment. So, Adam, we've actually got one more. Oh, excuse me. Um, so before, before you draw to a close, uh, this one says, thanks for the page on coal ash reuse. If orgs have suggestions or links to add to this or other pages on the site, who do we send it to? Scientists at uh, North Carolina A&T University have developed a new encapsulated coal ash block that might interest site visitors. Thanks, Katie. Um, you can email it to me, actually, and I'm just about to say my email address. Um, we'll make that our last question for today. I'll be sending out a link to the recording later today for everybody, and that will have my email, obviously, but. So my email is adam at cleanenergy.org. Katie, I'd be happy if you would send me that, if you'd send me those resources. I wanted to thank everybody so much for attending the, the webinar this morning. We'll send you an email um, later today or tomorrow with a recording of the webinar. And I just want to wish you all a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you so much.